But everyone is bused in there from their giant senior homes or from their adult foster care, or their kids leave them there for a respite. Social time, or to see social workers, or to see doctors. They have exercise there, they have bingo for their minds. I think based on the population we work with and their different cognitive abilities, comics makes things really accessible. Illustrating images makes concepts more easy to grasp. And I think people also like seeing portraits of themselves drawn. I've never not drawn. When I was a little kid, I got in trouble for drawing on the walls when I ran out of paper. I always kept a diary. I always was like a faithful uh, cataloger of my own life. When I moved to Portland, I was so excited. I was 19 years old and everything was thrilling to me. Like my illustrated diaries from that time are just full of wonder. And then I made a comic out of that called Invincible Summer and people really liked it. I started working in a nonprofit teaching other people how to make zines because self-publishing had been so validating for me. And that's how I got connected to the Marie Smith Center. The activities coordinator at the time approached me and said, would you do a zine workshop with these old people? And it was right up my alley. I had been teaching kids how to make zines and adults how to make zines and teenagers how to make them. And so I thought, oh, great. I'll go uh, talk to these senior citizens and get them, they'll be so excited to know that self-publishing exists. I bet they've just been waiting to tell their stories. They could not care less. The idea of that was so far beyond their concept of reality. Like not even just you're special, but also you're special enough that other people want to read about you. Plus you should do that yourself and put yourself out there. Like that was not something that was part of their thing. So they did not give a shit about self-publishing. We started asking them advice questions, like love advice, romance advice, advice about roommates, advice about, they had great answers. And at some point we realized like, oh, nothing's too adult for them because they are so adult. We had to adjust ourselves to them instead of adjusting them to us. And that is how we ended up just being embedded with them. Just us writing down what they said. But for that to happen, they had to feel comfortable with us. I have my fingers. How long have, do you think you've had it? Arthritis? Yeah. Oh, probably 15 years. Mm -hmm. I'm 78 now. Oh, wow. Well, I'm 34 and I have arthritis. <laughs> you ought to know how you are. And it's totally different. Totally different. Oh, absolutely. And it is from we, the East Coast. This is another country, so to speak, yeah. What they're, do you mean, like, like uh, very Vancouver friendly. is different than Montreal? They're very friendly. Yeah, well, Montreal I don't know as well. I know they're from, they're, from they're, friendly, they're friendly people. Canadians? They are very friendly. They're very polite. They're friendly. But then when I stopped teaching zine workshops about two years into the project, I just kept going to the Marie Smith Center because, like, what are you going to do, break up with your grandparents? So I go in there and I will just sit down and take notes about what people said, or I'll draw portraits of people that look interesting, and I'll be a fly on the wall just recording what's happening. The first issue of Tell It Like It Is, which is our zine, it kind of legitimized us a little bit. As issues kept coming out, we would put out like one a year. People started wanting to be in the zine, and so I decided it was a good time to do a Kickstarter to put out an anthology book of all of our stuff. These are voices and perspectives that you don't normally see published. So for them, the zine was like a cute little book. And for them, a book was a real object, and it legitimized all of our work together, and it made them feel really heard and really special. Thank you.